Um, hello, everybody. Um, again, I'm excited to be here. I want to thank Land Studio and the panelists for uh, coming in and participating. Studio to the Street 2.0 panel discussion, art and activism. My name is Jamal Collins, also known as Jay Working. I'm a designer, educator, and I I'm the founder of Creative Kids Group. And I just want to say that the arts are important and essential for our human experience. The ability to create outside a narrative outside our imagination and to act on those values is what makes us human. So today I want to talk about what we create helps make sense around our lives and everything around us. And I wanted to quote the late uh, Nia Simone and saying she said that the artist's duty is to reflect the times. So first, I want each of the panelists to give a brief introduction of themselves, and then I have a few guided questions to help us move along arts and activism. So number one, um, I would like to ask, how do artists create conceptual art? Number two, what is the approach to activism in their work? Number three, how does political driven work affect us all? And last, how does artists hope to impact their audience? So um, if the panelists could uh, introduce themselves. Well, I'll jump in and kick off. Thank you. It's good to be here with you all. I'm Kelsey Carter. I am uh, the impact director at Shooting Without Bullets, which is an organization based here in Cleveland. Um, what we really do at Shooting Without Bullets is that we're working to create an alternative arts ecosystem, one that centers black and brown youth and communities, and one that advances or accelerates social movement. Um, and to do that, we use cultural production, we use artist education and development, we work with young artists ages 13 to 21, um, and we also engage in activism and advocacy. And so as impact director, I serve as a producer on our creative projects, and I'm also looking at how do we ensure that this art has the impact that it lands and does what we need it to do in terms of addressing the social issues that both our artists and black, black and brown artists uh, in general experience, um, but black and brown youth experience and the social issues that we are touching upon in our works. How do we make sure that that really comes through and does what it needs to do? So I'll pass it over to another panelist to introduce. Hi everyone, my name is Tati Anna and I am an artist based in Brooklyn, New York. Um, I am a public artist, a street artist, uh, I'm a painter and illustrator. Most of the work that I do is visual art and it is usually based around the themes of race and gender. Um, I have done work really all across the country, um, outside of the country. Um, a project that I've done called Stop Telling to Smile is probably what I'm best known for, which is about gender-based street harassment. Um, my work centers Black and brown people, women, queer people. I'm interested in telling our stories, telling uh, the world how we sort of move and navigate throughout the world, um, how people treat us, how we are oppressed, um, and what we would like to do about that, how we'd like to change that. Um, I think that public art is a very important part of my work. I think that it does something that no other media of art can really do and that it kind of confronts the public um, with these issues and it also gives people access to art in a way that other mediums other media doesn't. Um, so I'm interested in that. I'm interested in public art. I'm interested in black folks. I'm interested in women. Um, I'm interested in queer people and I'm interested in telling our stories. So that's who I am as an artist and I'm happy to be here with you all today. Good morning. I'm Osman Mohammed, AKA swimmer. I'm a designer, a futurist, tattoo artist and uh, muralist. I do some stuff cross country, typically back and forth from here to uh, Texas. Uh, guest buy at some shops, some tattoo shops, and most of my work for the most part is political. Lexi, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, I can go. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Lexi Latimore. 
I am a very proud Cleveland-based artist. I am a dancer, a writer, director, performer, and I'm also an academic and a community practice social worker. So I'm currently getting my master's at Case Western Reserve University, and I'm researching and studying community trauma and resilience, utilizing the arts as a tool to bring about healing at the neighborhood level and to address various policy issues that we're facing in our neighborhoods and in our cities. Um, so I echo what some of the other panelists have said so far in terms of being a storyteller. And a lot of my work is based in history, in oral history, um, again, in performance, and really looking at the framework of what some of the trauma research can tell us about ourselves as individuals, but also how trauma can manifest at the neighborhood or community level. And that informs how I'm thinking about ways to bring about healing through my art. I'm really, really excited to be here. So a big thank you to Land and really honored to share space with all the other panelists this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have and another? I, I think that, uh, yeah, sorry, Jamal, sorry to interrupt. I think Sheila actually might be having a little trouble uh, logging on. So we're trying to help her offline, but feel free to continue and then we'll we'll have to introduce her when she's able to get on. Thanks. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, I wanna thank everybody for the introduction. Um, let's just kick off. This first question is, what are their approaches to activism in their work? So uh, let's, I guess, talk about the process and we can go one by one. So for Shooting Without Bullets, um, everything we do is activism. So the con our art itself touches upon and explores um, issues of social justice, um, primarily through the eyes, voices, and perspectives of black and brown youth themselves. So it's, it's really giving black and brown youth the tools, this art and social justice education to be able to translate their experiences, their feelings, the things they're seeing, the things they already know into art that impacts the masses. Um, we believe that that process is activism to empower young people, to give them the tools to do what they already are able to do, to explore the talents they already have. Um, those things lead to social and economic mobility for them and for their communities. Um, but it also allows them to get their voice into the public realm. Um, in addition to that, as impact director, I am a student of social movement. And so I am very interested and in always thinking about how do we best position this work in order to ensure that the impact it has does reach the masses and does create true social change. How do you get those wheels turning? Um, and so for example, that looks like connecting with community partners. We're engaged with in a project um, that we'll install this afternoon actually, um, where we're working with a local civic engagement um, organization called Cleveland Votes. So how do we connect this work that we're doing to the moment and to the people who are on the ground leading the efforts, whether that be through protests, whether that be through um, you know, voter registration, there are so many ways to impact social change. And we believe art to be that connector that can make all of those wheels turn. So every single aspect of what we do is activism from working with our youth, from the art that is uh, that results from that work and, and to the positioning of the art itself to reach the masses. Beautiful, that's awesome. You want to start, do it, should I start choosing people, Lexi? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, I think, I'm thinking largely about what the artist's role can be. And I think that part of our role is to really reflect our world, um, maybe even to reflect the worlds of others. And I think as a storyteller um, and, and someone who uses my, my body to, to tell story, I think that we 
understand our lives through stories. And so the storyteller then becomes very, very critical. And I think if we're aiming to bring about change, that narrative and stories and how and what we tell ourselves about our world becomes very, very imperative. And I think that that's where artists have an opportunity to shift, to challenge and um, to move us towards the future that we want to see. For me, again, a lot of my work in Cleveland has centered around uh, the neighborhood level and starting to unpack what policy, structural and systemic racism, how those larger issues have impacted folks on the ground and utilizing art and storytelling to break those big concepts into little bits that reflect what people are experiencing in their day-to-day -day lives. And I think that that exchange of, that exchange of knowledge um, and, and really being able to amplify other people's stories is just so incredibly important. Um, so I, I, I think that art, my, my art in terms of, of activism is, is really about um, translating what some of these larger policy things are into the, how do, how do we feel about them? How are we processing them? How are we living them out? Um, and really being able to amplify that in a way that that policy becomes really accessible to folks. Awesome. Well, I'll start. For me, a lot of the time, it starts with a conversation about what's going on with someone else or connecting the dots and adding a bunch of unrelated things that we think are unrelated to an idea or a concept. And that's just personally for me, but most of it is the actual on the ground work that I did as a youth, actually being security at rallies or marches, actually going to uh, panel discussions, uh, sitting at the feet of my elders and studying what they were doing or just translating that uh, through what I know now and what's going on now. And then I can come up with an image, then it's either gonna go to print, t-shirt, go to a wall. But activism starts at ground roots, doing work with the people so you can translate your vision to a wider audience. Thank you. Tatiana. Yes, um, so, you know, my work is, um, my work has been called activist art. Um, I don't always describe it that way. You know, I, I understand why it is described that way. Um, but I really think of my work as sort of telling the truth about our lives and, and doing it in a way that is attempting to challenge the sort of normalcy of the oppressions that we experience in our everyday lives. So, you know, um, street harassment or black folks being harassed in the street. These are things that happen to us all the times that happen to us every day. And it's um, sort of normalized and it's accepted. And so my work is sort of pointing a light on that and saying, this is what happens to us. Um, and I think it's just telling the truth. And so it's trying to make our world clearer and more um, understandable to people. And I think by doing that, it becomes um, a way of activism. Um, but I also like to think of my work as just being useful to activists. So I'm not necessarily the protester or the marcher in the street, but I am someone who can provide the artwork for that. I am someone who can um, illustrate that. I am someone who can tell the stories of the people who are out there doing that. Um, I, I also try to question, you know, why certain art is called activist art. 
Um, I think that when Black folks make work about Black people, um, it is already kind of assumed to be the sort of political work. And I think in a way it is. I think when we tell our stories and when we simply exist and live our lives in a way that is radical, um, in a way that is pushing something. Um, but I, I also want to kind of like question the ideas around activist art um, and why certain art is viewed that way. Um, I, you know, I also think that my work is in a way doing something like there's an active part of it, especially the public art. When I go out into the streets and I put up work on the side of a building and I put a poster on the side of a building, the action of doing that is in a way activism. Um, and that's something that I can't really deny, um, especially the work that is about street harassment. Um, just the act of doing it, it gives people something to do. And that action becomes activism in a way. Um, I think that, you know, engaging people with the work as well can be a form of activism. All of the people that I paint and draw are people that I have had conversations with, people that I sit down and talk to. Um, I ask them very explicitly, who are you? What do you go through? What is your life like? And I reflect that back into my work. Um, so there's this social engagement part of it. There's this community engagement part of it that for me is very important in my work. The process of the work is very important. Um, and, you know, I think in that I have been called an activist and I, I'm okay with that. But I'd also like for us to just kind of consider, um, you know, who is in the work, who is making the work um, and why this type of work is necessarily considered activist work. Um, and should all art be activist work if, if this work is considered that? Um, so I think that's how my work is considered activist work. This is how I think of activism when it comes to my work. Um, I'm really just simply trying to tell our stories. Um, and I think in there is activism, um, but I'd also like to consider why exactly that is. Thank you. And, and Jamal, Jamal, just, sorry, Jamal, just to interject, uh, Sheila was able to log on. Thanks so much, Sheila, for joining us. Um, we just wanted to uh, hear a little bit if you're able to introduce yourself and um, just say a couple words about your work um, before we go on, if, if you wouldn't mind. Thanks so much for joining us. Unmoved. Okay, thank you um, for having me, first of all. Um, my name is Sheila P. Bright. I'm a photographic artist and I've been working since, well, since 2000. And the work that I do, I'm a pickup from Tatiani Taniyashi. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. I agree with everything that she say. W.E. Du Bois talked about how art is propaganda. All art is propaganda. But when it comes to black bodies, it's, it's more amplified that way. I don't, I at one time didn't consider myself as an activist, but now I don't have a problem with saying that because this country has always labeled, um, is all about labeling. So I stand, I stand true to myself and my work. And I came from galleries and museums, but the, my current work, um, 1960 Now is about Black Lives Matter protests and the elders that were in the movement of the civil rights movement. And I think that a lot of that history, um, we were, it was whitewashed. So for me to be in public spaces to talk about this work for shared communities, because I collaborate a lot with my subject matters. And I think that's very, very important to do. So I, I'll leave it right there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so my next question is, I'm kind of moving around the questions some, um, cause a lot of you guys kind of answered a lot of my questions already, which is awesome. Um, I wanted to say, and this has been like a burning question that I have with many artists and designers in the Cleveland area that I talked to. And that is what ways can artists work together on social activism? Mm. <laughs> no, that's a very good question. Um, I've been approached by a designer here in Atlanta 
right now about how we can come together as creatives to work. And I think we're pondering on that idea, but that's a very, very good question is how we can all come together because we all have different platforms. I look at it like a orchestra where we play these different parts. And for us to come together, I think maybe that's something that we all need to think about not think about, but to do as a collector since we're dealing in virtual reality where we're in the pandemic. Absolutely. I think one of the things that um, comes up for me as important is that we've got to first recognize that we're not in competition with one another that all artists, uh, particularly those who are using their work to influence social change, to influence social movement, to be activism, um, we are in this together, right? It's about moving us all forward. Um, And there is space for all of us. Now, there are very strong systems and structures and institutions that prevent that and that, advance a narrative that is the opposite of that. And so I think for me, it's we've got to first break through that and we've got to recognize that, that we are in this together. You know, um, I was saying yesterday, I've worked with Lexi many times and just absolutely admire her work. I've worked with Sheila. Um, Tatiana's work is one one that we use regularly in our curriculums, you know, to teach our young people. So we've got to we've got to be fans of one another. We've got to celebrate each other's work. We've got to pull each other into our own opportunities wherever we can, um, and just recognize that we're stronger together, and that we as artists have to. Um, come together in order to do what we are trying to do in the larger world. To bounce off, Kelsey, I'm more interested now in building the spaces that we can control instead of always begging for one or having to compromise our collective visions for one. So now my focus has been on making sustainable commercial spaces for art that we can teach. And, you know, the pandemic's changed a lot. So what we're doing right now is a space, you know, and we can create more of these and work together virtually, but definitely without overhead, uh, sustainable that can run off the planet and we can bring in our youth and our communities and all these empty spaces and lots or whatever However, that works out spatially uh, because of social distancing and limited capacity. But yeah, we can definitely build out, make the buildings, control them, not have to uh, compromise on what we're doing, when we're doing it, and actually teach the youth how to become artists themselves or makers, designers, master builders in their own right, and then we can all build off of that. Well, Samana, I I completely agree, this is Lexi, that space is imperative. I don't think that it takes much more than us convening. I can't tell you how excited I have been for this panel, not simply to be a panelist, you know, that is what it is, but to connect with the other artists on the panel. So as Kelsey mentioned, we have worked together and I I love learning from her, learning from shooting without bullets. Um, And and even just anecdotally, Tatiana, I have seen your work as a pedestrian when I was living in East Boston. I used to pass your work every single morning on my way to my job working with young girls in the neighborhood. And it gave me strength, it gave me motivation. It made me walk like, hey, I got eyes. I have eyes on me. Um, There was this sense of protection from the work that you've put out to the world. And so I think to have this opportunity now that you know, with land providing the space for us um, to connect, that will be long lasting. 
Um, and so I think it's really important to Osman, your point that we, of course, it's incredible that land has provided this space, but we do not have to wait on anyone to create that space for ourselves. And that when we do create these spaces that they can be incredibly generative um, and lead to deeper connections that build upon one another. I know that for me, I'm an artist that does not work as well in isolation. My work is very community-based. Um, and so again, being with all of you today and um, working very interdisciplinary in an interdisciplinary fashion, um, really for me deepens the practice. And I'm hoping that we can all do more of it going forward. I would like to say one thing. Um, there's a community college in Kansas and they um, reached out to me and they're having their students print up some of my 1960 now images, the portraits, and they're actually going to wheat paste the images out in the public. And then we're going to have a virtual where I will be on it. And they're going, we're going to have a discussion about the work. And I thought that was really kind of creative, you know, in the time of pandemic for us to reach out that way, for them to, um, at their colleges, to we paste these images, and then they're going to project my film on the outside. So though, that's a, 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 a way to do it. And we could do this globally around the world. Sweet. Um. <clears throat> To thank you all for the kind words on my work. I, I appreciate that. That was nice to hear, Lexi. Um, to the question, how can artists work together and come together for social activism? Um, you know, I think it's I think it's really simple. You know, I think that you reach out to people that you admire, that you know, um, whose work is seems to be in line with your work, um, and you build something together. Um, but I think that. The important questions are, what are you working on? What do you care about? And to make sure that you're in line on the same things. Um, I have conversations with my artist friends all the time and we're always talking about um, what each of us are doing, um, what each of us are thinking, what conversations we're having, what questions we're asking of ourselves um, and thinking about what we can do in the future. I think right now, in this time, 2020, you know, I feel like it really is a time for big imagination, big innovation, big change. Um, everything is changing, everything is shifting. And I really believe that artists are the ones to change the world and decide what this future is going to look like. Um, and so because of that, I'm sort of not interested in some of the same conversations that I've been having, but more interested in new conversations. Um, you know, I've honestly kind of been bored with my own work. And so I've been thinking about what is something huge that I can do now, something different, something that can change, um, because we're not in the same time that we were even just six, seven, eight months ago. Um, so when it comes to working with other people, I'm interested in people who are also thinking that same way, um, who are also asking the same questions, who are asking different questions. Um, before I sit down and do the work, I'm always interested in just thinking and talking first. Um, and so for me, working with other people when it comes to social activism, I think really looks like sitting down and talking and having these conversations and then deciding what can we do, what can this look like? And I think it does look differently from working with institutions, from working with organizations. It can be that way, but we can also create our own things like people have already said. We can create our own, um, our own infrastructure, our own structures. What does it look like moving forward? Um, so right now today, I think working with other artists when it comes to social activism for me, just looks like radical imagination um, and being in line on what we want the future to look like um, and what we want to talk about, you know, what things do we want to talk about. Um, I'm interested in abolishing the police. I'm interested in abolishing um, the prison industrial mm -hmm. complex. Those are the things that I'm interested in right now. I'm interested in telling our stories. So if other people are interested in those things, I'm interested in talking with them about that and interested in thinking about what that can look like in the future. Um, so that's that's what I think, and that's kind of where I am with that. 
Awesome. I so agree with you with that because right. I've been documenting the movement since 1960 now, Black Lives Matter, and I feel that we need to move forward, not to forget because that's history, but we need to talk about the subjects that you were talking about. And I've been thinking a lot about that in my work too, is how can I move forward? I want to um, kind of dig a little deeper when you said um, you were reflecting and you said you were getting bored with your own work and kind of open this up for everybody to kind of talk about any other difficulties they had doing this work and any other uncomfortable situations that you might have been in by doing some active, you know, activism in their work as well. So. Well, for me, I've been having the same problem because I've been kind of bored because I have a book out. I've been traveling before the pandemic internationally and nationally about my work. And then George Floyd happened. And I'm saying they talk about the power of an image photography. And I said, I've done all of this work. I have a book. What am I doing as an artist? Because it seems like people talk about change but it seems like we're not reflecting that or manifesting that. So I, when, when, when the, when, what happened with George Floyd and the protests, I did not want to go out and photograph at all. And I knew it was important to do it, but I didn't want to do it. So I've been reflecting a lot since the pandemic about how to move forward. And that was my problem. And now I'm really thinking a lot about the land. How can I talk about the land? Because I think that's very, very important now and how that land is in relationship to black bodies. And so I think that's what's gonna help me because I've been photographing um, the movement since 2013, and I have become very bored and disenchanted myself as an artist. Like, what am I doing? I feel you. I've been focusing on doing 3D modeling a lot more and architectural design. Uh, so I've been going in on programs like Rhino and Maxwell and just more interested in that lately. And I'm 46 and I don't know how hip of a graffiti artist or how uh, edgy I am anymore in that, in that realm. My, uh, my thoughts about how to be an activist have changed as I'm getting older and I'm more into biomorphic design and that's what's been exciting me now, and particularly building. And it's always been a thing with me where if I could draw it, I wanted to see it three-dimensional in my hands. So I've been doing more uh, house rehabbing and looking at moving forward with uh, some construction guys and building and doing retrofitting for existing buildings that we can turn them into uh, great spaces for art or whatever business someone wants to have that maybe can't afford it right now. Um, just transforming, transforming landscape and being more interested in what can you do with land, land is power. Mm. So to talk a little bit about challenges, um, I think one of the things to recognize that I don't believe is often recognized in the, the kind of processes and the systems that sort of control how art is made, who gets to make art, what art gets funded, et cetera, is that when we're talking about art as activism, we're often talking about artists as people with lived experiences. Uh, many times, if you are making art as activism, you know, you are speaking to something that you have personal experience with. Um, and so there are multiple challenges in that. Um, one being that you're continuing to experience the challenges 
as you're trying to get the art made or as you're trying to build the organization that gets the art made or as you're trying to build the organization to get the art made to ensure that black and brown youth have what they need to be artists in that pipeline. Um, and so I think that sometimes that gets lost. And so there are challenges from sort of uh, just the, the personal emotional standpoint, the burnout. Um, there are challenges from the identity standpoint. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that in the city of Cleveland, we are considered to be the worst city in the uh, United States for black women. And we have the highest child poverty rate in the country. Our child poverty rate is 50.5%. So that means when I'm working with black and brown youth, just about one out of every two is living in poverty. There are unique challenges that exist at that intersection of race and socioeconomic status that compound to make it even harder for those young artists to move through the pipeline. Um, and also for the art that comes from those young artists to get made, to be approved, right? Um, in addition to that, I think you, there are certainly circumstances where you're experiencing censorship, where you're experiencing you know, people wanting to water down your work because they don't understand mm -hmm. where it comes from and what it means and what it needs to do and how to do that. Um, so the challenges can be extensive and are, um, but what you do, you, you keep pivoting, you get creative, that's why we're artists, right? And so you find ways. You know, Sheila talked about wheat pasting, Tatiana wheat pastes a great deal of her work. You find creative strategies to ensure that the work gets up, that it gets out and it does what it needs to do and you go from there. Kelsey, thank you. And um, I think also being a Cleveland based artist, I'm really grateful to you for raising those incredibly harrowing and important statistics. And that to me has shaped a lot of the work that I've been doing in Cleveland, both in what it's challenged and what it's inspired. And I think coming from the community practice social work um, discipline, I'm thinking a lot about trauma to understand trauma so that we can then move towards healing. And I think about the way that trauma manifests in the body on an individual level, and also how policy systems create traumatized environments. Um, and I think that one of the biggest things with trauma in the body is, is really thinking about safety. Do I feel safe in my own body? I have a professor who talks about you know, with, with trauma, your body is both the crime scene, the scene of the crime, and also the space where healing can happen. So it's both and. And as a movement artist, I'm thinking a lot about how can we utilize movement? How can we utilize storytelling to work through that on an individual and interpersonal level, but also on a systemic level, when you're looking at some of these rates in Cleveland, we're recognizing that this, there is a traumatized system at play that people in their interpersonal relationships are resisting and being resilient and creative in the face of huge obstacles and barriers. But how can we create space that is safer for them? How can we create neighborhoods that are safer? I'm thinking about the Black Lives Matter movement and, and what it means. And I think a lot of it has to do with, with safety and security and well-being. Is my black body safe when I leave this space? Is my black body safe even when I'm in my own home? Rest in peace, Breonna Taylor. Um, so I think that in terms of, of thinking through challenges, these are some of the frameworks that I'm coming to the work with of like, if I can understand how, how pain happens, how pain is inflicted and enacted, 
again, on a personal level. And if I can also understand the way that policies and systems have created very, very painful and generationally passed down forms of oppression, then I can start to think through what might healing look like in this space? What do I have as an artist that I can, I can bring to that? Um, and who else do I need to call upon thinking about those collaborations to also make this work possible and to keep it going? Thank you. I kind of got cut off, so I'm sorry about that. Just I just logged back on. Um, I had a question that was in the chat, and it was on, and this kind of goes a little bit about everybody talking about different organizations. Um, how can the arts organizations help artists communicate more collectively? Say that again. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this was a this was a question in the chat, and it was it was saying that how can art organizations help the artists communicate more collectively? Hmm. More of these. Say it again. More of these. More of these panels, particularly now, because uh, this was an awesome effort and. More of these will work. We're communicating now. Mm -hmm. Vince, I don't know if we're going to have um, some questions at the at the end before we close. So I didn't I didn't know what time you wanted to do that. Yeah, I think we could um, open it up to some of the the other questions. There's a couple more in the chat. Uh, another one I see is um, from Michael Gill, um, and he said. Uh, the Cleveland artist and poet Julie Patton said to me once, the most political thing you can do is be yourself. What I took from that is that breaking free of expectations is a political act and defining yourself as an individual is the first most important thing. Can you talk to me about that? The freedom to just be yourself, especially in the context wherein people expect people of color to produce politically topical work. Anyone want to jump in? <laughs> um, I, I think that's I think that's a good question, and I think it's also a bit related to the last question that Jamal posed and everything that the other panelists have just talked about, which is the difficulty in creating work, um, what we consider activist work, um, as someone who experiences all the things that we're talking about in the work. So usually black folks are creating work, um, this activist work that is about the Black experience. Um, we're making work about that, but we're also living that in our daily lives. You know, it's not just something that we're talking about or writing about or painting about. When we walk outside, we're actually experiencing that. Um, and so organizations can help us and um, support us by being understanding of that and not expecting us to produce as if we're just machines, but understanding that we are human beings, that we are people, especially right now in 2020 when everything is hard and we're all experiencing some form of um, hardship and trauma. Um, and we're also expected to make work about the things that we're experiencing. Um, so we are subjected to death, subjected to um, all of these things all of the time. And we're also making work about that and it's difficult. Um, so I think being understanding of that is one way that organizations can support us. Um, and, and yes, you know, a lot of this work starts with ourselves. You know, a lot of the work that I make is starting with my own experience. Um, I make work about black women and queer folks and all of this because that's what I am and that's the community that I'm a part of. And these are the things that I experience. Um, and that's why it's important for me to talk about what I go through as a human being. Um, and it's also important to understand that while I'm experiencing oppression as a black person, as a woman, that's not all that I go through. Um, being black and being a woman also means that I experience joy and celebration and all of these things. Um, and I think that people should also be okay with us creating work that's about that. Um, the black experience isn't just about death. It isn't just about um, 
you know, oppression. It's about all of these other things too. It's about love and pleasure. It's about all of that stuff too. And I think that when we're talking about black liberation, we also need to be thinking about that stuff too. We also need to be uplifting artists when we create work that is about joy and about love and about ple pleasure um, and not just oppression. Um, the expectation for Black people, for Black artists to create work that is about the hard stuff all of the time, I think is oppressive itself. Um, but that's because that's asking us to not just experience this stuff, but to talk about it and to write about it and to make art about it all the time. Um, so when artists bring themselves, bring them full selves to their artwork, express our, express our full selves in our artwork, um, it shouldn't just be an expectation that we're talking about the challenges of being black. It should also be expected that we're talking about, um, you know, everything else that we experience being black. You know, I love being black, I love being a woman. Um, and it's not because um, cops following me or men harassing me in the street. Um, it's these other things too. Um, so when we think about, I feel like all of this stuff is related to one another, supporting artists, the expectations of artists, um, you know, how we work together as artists, um, it's something that I've been asking of myself. How do I show the Black experience without also always thinking of it as just being oppressive, right? How do I show the other side of the Black experience by Black experience? Thank you. I do think um, what you were just saying is always projected onto us as artists. And I can give you an example. In 2006, I created a body of work called Suburbia. And I wanted to show the universal commonality of suburbia with African Americans. I didn't call it suburb. I didn't call it African. I didn't call it Black suburbia, suburbia or African. I mean African American suburbia. And when that, I won my first. I became national with that body of work, and I had to show that work to photo editors, curators, book publishers, consultant, and what all of their common theme was that I did not have enough signifiers in that work to show that it was black homes. Now we're in the 21st century. You see how that was projected on me? Cause I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking about the invisibility of black folks um, in the art world because at that time, a lot of photographers were showing suburbia, but I didn't see people like us. And it wasn't about activism, about liberation. It was about the home. But all of that was projected on me. And matter of fact, I had a show at MoMA um, in Cleveland with that body of work. And when people were there, which was mostly 90% white, they were so amazed of the images. I would hear stories like, oh, I see a library. They, um, they don't, they, I, they read, I don't see a TV. So I think that is in the psyche of America, the psychology of it unconsciously of that stereotype. And it's always projected on us because us as artists, I know for me, I don't look at my work when I start as art activism at all. Thank Same. you. Oh, okay. That's my um, same for me. I don't always feel like I have to do something that's, I just, sometimes I just want to do something nerdy that I enjoy or something that looks really nice. So, but I guess what I want to do now is free myself from the position where I feel like I have to make this next deep piece to keep my brand and what I'm doing going, you know, uh, and just, yeah, have the space to where when I want to be me, I'll be me. If there's something that's really in my mind that it's, it's important, then I can express it and it's a clear, concise image, then I'll do it. Oh my, I'm, I really appreciate you raising that because I think that I personally have put a lot of pressure I think I found this, especially last year, where I felt like, okay, like, so you have these tools and you're able to really um, 
express story through, through performance, through dance, through writing. So you really need to make sure that your audience is, is, is getting this information about the high infant mortality rate in Cleveland, about the poverty rates, about this, that, and the next. And I found that most of my performances last year were heavy and that I was carrying that physically in my body. I, that, that's how the only way that I can share it with you is if it's honest here. And I thought about that and was just like, well, what stories are you telling? What stories are you being asked to tell? But also what stories are you, are you putting, on your, putting pressure on yourself to tell? And also how are you telling them? And that's why I'm really careful with my language when I'm talking about trauma. I'm talking about it as a way to understand pathways towards healing. But I'm also thinking about the many ways that people are resisting these very oppressive systems that we have. And so that's a goal that I have going into this next year of like, how can you utilize this body, this storytelling body to celebrate, to bring joy, to bring people together in very meaningful ways, to uplift their stories and put physical spotlight on them again, in ways that are affirming and empowering. Um, and if possible, that are even more uh, led by them and by their expertise. So I think, I think you all for, for really raising that of, you know, what pressure is coming externally, but also I'm recognizing some of the pressure that I put on myself as a keeper of story, as a presenter of story to, to educate and inform and always use a platform to push a point when it's like, there's something very black joy is radical. Black healing is radical. Taking care of ourselves um, is imperative. And so I'm, again, grateful to you all for, for raising that and allowing me to name it to artists from artists and friends from across the country to say it's my goal to really uh, center joy uh, in my next big body of work. Thank you. I want to thank everybody for coming. I want to thank um, Land Studios, of course, and all the panelists um, for this amazing discussion on art and activism. And if, you know, Vince, if you wanted to say anything, the Land Studios wanted to make any comments about anything, go ahead. Vince, you're muted. You're muted. <laughs> I do this every single week. Anyway. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, uh, you, you know, that it, it, it's ending so soon. If we could just take a, like a second, one more minute, maybe. And um, there's a question that Kelsey has already addressed a little bit. And we, we could make this the last question. Um, actually, you've already addressed it a lot, Kelsey. But I, I, I do would like to hear like more about this. Uh, someone says, what issues and creative processes do young artists connect with more as you work together? And how are they experience, expressing their activism? If we could just get some, you know, maybe some short answers from, from anyone who has something to say about that as we wrap up. Um, well, uh, my interaction with, uh, with younger artists is usually like on a case to case basis, but you know, just in what they end up doing later on and then coming back and being like hey this dude led me to this and look where i am now and just to see them advance and do something incredible that i never saw come out of them before while i was in their presence is great well thank you everyone i um you know as i said i wish we had more time to listen to um just all of you speak individually, but we, we certainly appreciate um, your, your being with us today. And thanks, Jamal, for um, leading the discussion. Thank um, you. If, if you have any questions, you, you know, we, we will, you can, you, we have them in the chat box and we will try to um, uh, get some answers for you from, from the panelists if, if that works out. So again, we, um, are, we will not be having a, a, a session next Friday, but we'll be back the week after that and we will um, keep you apprised of, of the various um, I, various um, programs that we have coming forward as part of Studio to the Streets. So thank you everyone and um, please, if you would, complete the survey when it comes to you and, and we will uh, hope to see you again at another Studio to the Streets session. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank to you. Amazing artists. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Peace. Bye. Happy. Bye. Bye. Bye.